uh, kind of set up the story, uh, the characters, what's at stake, and also, if you can, give us some context in terms of where this film is set during the events of World War One. Well, the movie is set on one day, on two hours of one day in 1917, the spring of 1917, and uh, the Germans, uh, this is obviously true, uh, retreated to the Hindenburg Line. Um, but for about 72 hours, the British had no idea where they had gone. Um, they didn't know whether they had surrendered, whether they had retreated, withdrawn, and there was this nightmarish period where they were cut adrift, effectively, over land that they had fought over for three years, which was suddenly empty. Uh, the Germans had rigged it with landmines, with booby traps, left behind snipers. They'd taken most of the men or killed them. They'd left behind some of the women and children, destroyed the towns and anything of any lasting value. And it's across this landscape that these two young men are sent uh, to try to preserve the lives of 1,600 men who are being sent into almost certain death by attacking the Hindenburg Line, which they think is a sign of retreat, but in fact was heavily fortified, um, a trap, really, um, on this one day. Um, and uh, the movie, as you know, takes place uh, in just two hours and uh, in one unbroken shot. Yes. I, I, I think we, we really want to get into how how you you executed that. I, I want to give everybody up here a hug for that. But I imagine when Sam told everyone that this is how he wanted to shoot the film, everybody was like, "Let me give you a, a hug." But let's start there, Sam. Um, I'm curious, what comes first here? Do you write a script and then decide, I want to shoot this all as one long continuous take? Do you say, I want to sh make a film, one long continuous take, and then take shape the story? Does it happen at the same time? It happens all at the same time on this one. Um, I had the idea uh, about one person carrying a message. That became two people. And then I thought, what if it was in two hours of real time? I always had a, a, this particular story about the First World War. And shortly after that came, what if we never cut? And that probably took about a minute, that series of thoughts, and then never changed, really. Um, uh, you know, it was on the front page of the script. This movie is written and designed to be shot in one continuous shot. And so everyone knew exactly what it was going in. Um, and uh, it was baked in. It was, it was, it was it part of the fabric of the story from the very word go. And without that, it wasn't something that we... We didn't take a script and impose it on top of the script. It was conceived from the very ground up. Uh, and that goes from every department, including the writing. When I went to Christie shortly after with a story structure, um, I said to her, this is one shot, and that's what we have to write it for. And that was part of the excitement of doing it from the very beginning. I'm so curious how this affects everyone's job. Roger, I actually have like a question on here. How did you actually do it? Which is such a gigantic <laughs> question. How many hours did you go? <laughs> but I mean, let's start here. You've worked with this gentleman before. I, mean, I believe you've probably developed a shorthand at this point. Uh, when he comes to you and says, I want to shoot this all in one, one continuous take. What do you think? I don't think he told me that. I think I've got the script and it was on the front page. <laughs> and it said, this is conceived as one continuous shot. I am really? <laughs> uh, I mean, it was kind of weird. Um, but then once you read it, and then once I was talking to Sam, then it made sense. Because uh, it did, I mean, quite honestly, I said to Sam, when I first read it, I thought, well, is it a gimmick? But it's not. It's absolutely integral to the story. And I mean, I hope, and I think we all hope, that when you watch the film, you won't be aware that it's one shot. It's just this sort of immersive experience. And I felt that when I saw a cut of the film, which was only a week after we finished shooting, actually, um, cut, um, I felt that it was it was this immersive experience, and I wasn't really aware that I was watching one take. You know? What I get, you know, and I, I, it's a little bit in here, but I imagine the most challenging part, or one of the most challenging parts of executing a film like this, is the fact that it's so much outside, and you're dealing with the the elements of of the outdoors, which we really haven't seen at this scale before, is, yeah. is that? Well, he, Roger did have one question, which I think was a crucial question. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, okay, I, I like the script, this one shot thing, why? <laughs> well, that, that's the only question. Really. Yeah. And I said, because I want to step every step with the characters, I want to breathe every breath with them, I want to be trapped on their journey with them, it's an emotional experience. Um, and I think a kind of dream state emerges after a while, where you know you can't escape. 
and you have to go on it with them. Um, even though what they do is an ordeal, I did not want the movie to feel like an ordeal, you know. And, and I think that what Roger managed to achieve uh, is for that camera to become a third character, uh, for, for us not to be aware. I mean, if you're looking at the movie and thinking about how it's shot, when you eventually do see it, then I think we'll have failed. I want you to, to live with those two characters. And if you don't care about them, if you don't go on that journey with them, then, then, then what's the point? You know? And I think that we were on the same page about that from, from the very beginning. Were there any days where you said, I wish I hadn't, hadn't done this? Roger? <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, because it was just this awesome challenge, and, and that was the thing, and you knew where it was going. And once we'd done a few shots, we were going, wow, that's really cool. I mean, not just for the sake of being cool, it just was really good. We, we started off doing some stuff in the trenches, and it was like, yeah, that, that really works, that's really immersive. And it's such a trip for me, you know, I'm like a lot of time operating remotely, and you know, you're doing a long extended take, you know, the longest takes were probably eight and a half minutes we went to. And you know, you're doing kind of tricky camera things and the guys are doing their performance and everything's got to be in sync because it's all like a ballet. So you get one hard moment, then you get another and you get another and you're like almost to the end of the shot and you think, oh my God, I hope I don't blow this one because otherwise we've got to all the way back. <laughs> it's a real trip. It was a real trip. It's got to be exhilarating too, I think. We rehearsed this movie more than I've ever rehearsed any movie, partly because if you think about it, you can't, you can't jump through space and time. Editing always allows you to jump through space and time. And uh, you, you know, if, you, if it says the characters walk through a quarry, up the stairs, through a burnt copse, down a hill, through an orchard, into a farmhouse, and they have this much dialogue, you have to measure the set to match the dialogue, and you have to measure the dialogue to match the distances. So we were out there in fields and rivers in some cases and woods months and months before, literally walking across. I mean, anyone looking at us would have thought we were a bunch of mad people. <laughs> walking with script in hand, walking up and down hills, you know, and saying, we just maybe just got another 20. And, and Roger would say, I think we should put the tree there. You know, and I said, well, well, let's move it another 10 yards over there. I mean, that's what it was, that's what it was you know, for long periods. Um, uh, and uh, when certain people came, I mean, I remember, Mark Strong turned up, uh, and he has a he has a scene, and he, he had to walk, he has to walk past uh, with with uh, George's character, uh, four trucks filled with men, and uh, he got to the end of the dialogue. He said, "That's amazing! What a coincidence that the dialogue lasts just the four <laughs> trucks." I said, "That is not a fucking coincidence." <laughs> <laughs> We've been rising, rising for six months. <laughs> Could have been five trucks or three trucks. No, it was just magically four trucks. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, Sam, let's dive into this story a little bit. Um, it has some personal connections to you. Can you kind of talk about where the story came from and how your grandfather was involved? Yeah, I, I think the first time I even understood the idea of war of any sort was when my grandfather told me about his experiences in the First World War. I can't be more than 10 or 11. He fought in the war from 1916 to 1918. As an 18-year-old, he arrived on the, at the front. And he told us stories when we were kids, um, sitting at his feet. And he told me a story about carrying a message. And that fragment always stayed with me. And I always thought that the kernel of that would make something extraordinary. But the movie grew from there. It's not a story about my grandfather. It's not based on him. George is not playing him. These are two entirely created characters. But the spirit of it, and what those <coughs> men went through, and the sacrifices that they made, the selflessness, um, the sense of um, uh, you know, of, of believing in something bigger than themselves, that, that's something that stayed with me. And I've always felt lucky to have been born in peacetime but the generations that came before us were not. And so for me, it was something very important, very personal, a passion project, really. I never really believed it would, it would come to anything, you know, and I think even when I wrote my 20-page treatment, it, you know, the moment I sat down and wrote page one, scene one, I was suddenly very interested in what was happening outside the window, you know, <laughs> in the way that you are when you actually have to write it. And it was Christy who really got me to write the script. Um, uh, and it, without that, it would always have just remained a kind of, uh, 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 you know, an idea. Um, but that's where it came from. 
Roger, uh, talk about how you and Sam developed the look of the film. Um, was there anything that served as a, as a giant inspiration, whether it was a photograph or an illustration? Um, we, we did a lot of research with Dennis Gassner of Productions Design, and we, we did an enormous amount of looking at what was, you know, what visual research there was in the First World War. There's one particular photograph that I actually dug out and showed to Sam, and it was just a group of soldiers, just on a standard lens, and it was just this kid looking at the camera. To me, that said everything. It was this young kid, and he looked so lost. And I, I don't know, it's not what the film's about, but it was just something that really hit me out of all the research, you know. And we went there, we went to France to, you know, tour some of the site, Vimy Ridge and Thiepville and stuff. Yeah, it was quite, it was very moving. And so there was just something about that, that soldier that kind of helped you? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, when you look at all the research, and, and obviously that was key to what, what Dennis and the design of the thing, but it's, it's just how you attach yourself to something. And that, that photograph, to me, said everything about what I felt about what we were doing. I don't know, it's something intangible. You asked me what I was. <laughs>